Hi guys, in this video we will learn how to use the Zap request editor. In one of the previous sessions we saw how we can edit a request using breakpoint before it is sent to the application server. However, there are situations in pen testing when we have to alter the same request a number of times and send it to the application server. And there is a feature in Zap to do exactly the same and it's called the request editor. So let's quickly launch Zap. Okay, as you can see, Zap is up and running. Let's quickly manually explore our Maturity website and launch the browser. Login as admin, admin pass. Okay, this time we are going to go to injection application log and add to your blog and what we can do is just add a test blog this is our test and save the blog entry so as you can see the entry has been saved in the blog entries table and if we go to the zap, let me quickly sort it on ascending order so that our latest request is at the top. So this is our post request to add a new blog entry. So if you right click on it, there is an option called open resend with request editor. If you select this one. It will open up the manual request editor window. Here, there are a couple of things to note down. This is our request tab and this is our response tab. Obviously, we haven't sent anything to the server yet, so it is blank. In this drop down, you can change the method option. In fact, with the request editor, you can create a request from scratch and then submit to the server or you can resend an existing request after making any changes so that's what we are doing so we are trying to resend an existing request so method is already post so we are going to just leave it as it is and this is the header part of the message as at the moment it is displayed in text format you can change it to hags or you can change it to the table format so if i just go back to the text mode and this is the body and body you can change it to text this is the simple view or you can change it to hex or table so i prefer this format so that you can see all the parameters separately and this option is basically at the moment on which says split display for header and body. So if I just click on the other button, now it is a combined view of the header and body. So I just go back to the original format. And then there are a couple of other options. So this is to accept cookies, which is enabled. This is to follow redirects. And this is to update content length automatically. So basically, if you make any changes to any of the parameters, which we will see soon, and then it will automatically adjust the content length parameter. And this is to regenerate NTCSRF token. So as you can see, there is no token at the moment. This option, when selected, will regenerate NTCSRF token. Let me maximize this. Next is separate tabs for request and response. As you can see, we are on request tab at the moment and the response any will be on a separate tab. You can also click on this button so that request and responses are shown top to bottom. On the top, you will see request header and then the body and the response header and body. And then there is an option 
to show request and responses side by side as you can see on the tooltip so if you click this one here which is my preferred option actually you can see request on the left hand side which is the header on top and then the body on the left hand side and on the response when you receive from the server it will be header will be on the top and the body will be at the bottom let us try to send some messages now via this request editor as you can see we have got a blog entry which is we have got this is a test so if we just change it you can double click on it and you can change it this is another test and so this is your submit button let us try to send this message now with our changed blog entry and see what happens so if i send it here you can see the response header has got 200 http response which is okay and this is the response body now if i go back to the history tab there you will see an entry here says source is manual which means it has been sent manually by the request editor and here is your message of course you can click on the request here and see the detail so let us quickly see what has happened in the front end so if i just go back as the screen is refreshed now you can see that entry has been made into the blogs table let me quickly rearrange the windows let's try another blog entry this is another test say two i think there is a problem in displaying the send button if the window is too small so i've just increased the size so you can say send now and obviously the zap has got another post request and it's a manual entry and this is another test 2 is logged and if i go back to the front end again if i just say view blogs so if i just go back and there is another test so you can change manual request as many times as you want and then keep sending this message so if i just say to three and send it again obviously it has gone through zap and go back refresh the screen so this is another test so we have got another entry let's change something in the header you can see there is a cookie parameter and there is a user name and there is a uid which i believe is user id at the moment if you see all the blogs are appearing in the name of admin because that's what where we are logged in so let us change the user id to say hacker and uid to say eight and change the blog to this is a blog by say hacker just for the fun of it and earlier everything was going to the admin because that's what we are logged in but now we have changed the request in between so the request was sent from the browser and zap intercepted it now we are changing it within zap and let us send it and let's try to go back the request hasn't come here so let's see if it is in user id 8's account and to find out who is user id 8 so if you go to the folder c zamp ht docs mutility passwords so in there you will see accounts.txt file so you can double click on it you can see user id and passwords of all the users in the mutility website 
So user ID 8 is Bobby and the password is password. So let us log in with that ID and see what happens. And the password is password and login. Okay, so we are logged in in Bobby's account now. And if we go to his blogs, see there is the entry. So basically what you are able to do is you are able to create blogs in someone else's account. Depending on the system under test, so there may be server side validations implemented to prevent such type of attacks. But this is one example where if you are logged in as one user and you are able to change things in other users account, as you saw, we are able to add blogs in other users account just by changing the ID in the message. This is how you can use the request editor to change a request and send it multiple times. If you haven't done already, please do subscribe, share and like the video as it really encourages me to create more videos. Thank you.